Hey there, YouTube. Welcome here with Got That Funk. Thanks for joining me. So President Trump has met with Kim Jong-un in Singapore for what's been billed as an historic summit. And I think it would be cynical to imply that, that it's not a historic summit. Um, President Trump has taken a lot of criticism, uh, especially from people on the left, but not limited to, about sort of elevating the status of Kim Jong-un with a direct meeting and so forth. And uh, while I would agree uh, that such a meeting should be preceded by a lot of intense diplomacy from the underlings of both of the uh, leaders in question, the bottom line is that sooner or later would have got down to this. And, um, you know, hopefully, though, with uh, the foreplay done in advance, as it were, uh, we could have expected maybe a bit more progress than what seems to be the case. Now, I'm not here to deride President Trump as regards meeting with Kim Jong-un or to criticize the fact that what he's brought back is a bit shallow because I think that's self-evident. I don't really think you need to, to too strenuously make that case. Um, Trump is up to something else as far as I'm concerned. You know, Consider the fact that uh, Trump's been angling to get involved militarily with Iran. Trump criticized throughout the campaign and until he shredded it himself, uh, the Iran deal, where we had Iran agree to abandon 98% of its um, enriched uh, uranium and then, you know, agree to regular inspections to certify that they're only using their um, uh, nuclear power stations to generate electricity and they're not uh, using them to manufacture weapons grade material. And those inspections were like ongoing and they could be done uh, without warning and so forth. It was a pretty good deal. And Trump decided it wasn't a good deal and he ripped it up. And um, so when you compare that deal to what's just come back from the meeting in Singapore, I think you would uh, be right to say that, you know, this, this deal that Trump has come back with isn't really very good at all. Having said that, it's really not about this deal with North Korea, okay? Here's my interpretation of what could have gone on behind the scenes, you know? Trump said he didn't need to do a lot of preparation, for example, before he met with Kim Jong-un, which I kind of thought was hilarious. But anyway, here's my take. My take is Trump says something like this to Kim Jong-un. Like, look, my people don't want to go to war with your people, and then you know your people don't want to go to war with us. My people do want to go to war with Iran. So what we've got to do is provoke Iran into doing something that will give us the excuse we need to go in. And if they see me meeting with you and making concessions towards you because you've got nuclear weapons, then they will resume their nuclear weapons program, which will give us all the excuse we need to go in and uh, take out their regime. <clears throat> so all you and I have to do is shake hands a few times, praise each other's, uh, you know, resolve and, you know, whatever, and leave the rest to me. The agreement that comes out between you and I isn't really necessarily really why I'm here. It's not really relevant. As long as we can sell it back home <clears throat> as some kind of an achievement, that will be good enough, uh, and the press will move on to the next scandal soon enough. That's my interpretation. That's my interpretation. Cards on the table. You know, I honestly think that this meeting with North Korea doesn't have anything to do with North Korea whatsoever. I think it's all about Iran. It's all about trying to provoke Iran into basically resuming their nuclear weapons uh, capabilities, which the United States, you know, has already said that it will not tolerate. I know maybe I'm a bit cynical, and uh, my little theory here is just that it's it's a hypothesis. It uh, doesn't even rise to the level of theory. It's a guess, okay? I admit that. But we can't help but speculate, right? Even though it's a fool's game. I would be interested to hear your comments about what you thought about uh, Trump going to North Korea in the first place, uh, the results of what he came back with. Do you think it was a mistake to sort of elevate Kim in, on the international stage by giving him, uh, you know, a respect as an equal, as a national leader. 
from my point of view, I'll just, I'll just, I have to chime in there myself because from my point of view, um, the only solution, if there ever was be one with the whole situation with Korea, North Korea and its nuclear weapons, would be to invite Kim, Kim to the table and say, look, you know, if you're going to be part of this nuclear club, there are absolutely rules that you must abide by. It's, it's not up for debate, you know. That's the price of admission for having these weapons. Um, so I, I, and I think he would have responded to that probably. But you know, make no mistake, Kim Jong Un is one of the most uh, evil dictators there are in the world. Uh, the North Korea is almost unambiguously probably the worst country on earth, just in terms of uh, the standard of living as well as its uh, record against human rights and so forth. So, anyway, I, I meant to wrap up the video and I, and I didn't. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.